What's up everybody? Welcome back to Damien After Dark. If you're new here or you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video so you get up to date content when I drop new videos and so much more. Today's video is on the Real Housewives of Miami because we are in the new season. We're finally on season four after eight years and we're four episodes in. And I wanted to do a little recap and just see how things were going, how what you guys thought about it, how you were feeling the new season. I am thoroughly impressed and I've been enjoying it. It gives me old school housewives vibes. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, so I'm just glad that all the girls are back, of course. And you probably watched my uh, first video about Miami. We talked about that. But this is going to be particularly more about um, episode four because episode four really got into it and episode four really reminded us why the miami girls never needed to be canceled in the first place okay because this was like a dinner party from hell type episode um first of all we'll get into it and we'll start off with alexia meeting up with herman's gay lover if you remember um alexia was married to herman very wealthy man in miami and um, he was gay, and I guess Alexia was his beard, so to speak, all throughout their marriage, but he supported her financially all throughout. And one thing that I noticed, did you guys notice how in the sneak peek for next week, how um, Alexia's husband says, well, fiance on the show, but now husband, says that he's going to, that Peter is pretty much living off of Herman's money and it's going to be a nobody. I didn't know that. So if you remember, Marisol says in the episode that Herman was a very generous man. He loved to give. So evidently he loved Alexia and Peter's children enough to where he left them a really good amount of money. We don't know how much, of course, but he left them with enough money to live on for a while. And we will see in the upcoming episodes how Alexia's now husband um, is pretty much stating that Peter's going to be a nobody because he's going to live off of Herman's money for the rest of his life. I don't know about that. That seems like a reach to me. I don't know. Peter, I follow Peter on Instagram. He seems to be, you know, following his dream and doing his thing. But that's a whole other video. Um, so Julia and Gertie and um, Adriana all meet up at Julia's farm because Julia has a farm as well as a home in Miami. And they all go out onto the farm and Adriana's wearing a white dress and she gets that dirty and we'll get into the foot massage. But I was like, Adriana, when would you wear that girl? Maybe she thought the scene, the scene was, I don't know. I was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt here, but maybe they just didn't know they were gonna be going into mud. That's the only thing that I can think of. Um, and then later they all sit down and I was shocked to learn that Julia had a son back in the no early 90s in 92 and he was pretty much killed by a nanny or a caretaker due to shaken baby syndrome and that was a very emotional scene. We saw her get emotional. Um, it was it was sad. I felt bad for Julia and I really felt for her. And then we seen some tension between Adriana and Gertie because Gertie starts crying when Julia or Julie I, I get Julie's name mixed up, Julie and Julia. I say two different things all the time. Somebody correct me in the comments, but Gertie kind of got emotional and uh, I'm gonna, I'm kind of team Adriana on this. I know a lot of people are team Gertie, but I did kind of feel like she was making that moment about her because Julie, Julia was talking about her, her, her death. It was a very vulnerable moment. And, um, Gertie was talking about how she had a miscarriage and Adriana's like, why are you making this about you, Gertie? And I kind of agree with Adriana on that. Like, I feel like while yes, this was a bonding moment for those ladies, this is a moment for Gertie and Julia to really bond and grow that friendship and bond over, um, you know, something like that, I do kind of think she should have waited and said that later and let Julia just really get it out and talk about it. Um, uh, so another scene was Larsa looking for her home, another home in Boca, which I'm kind of with Lisa on this one. Lisa rode with her and she did. She was like, why are you looking for a home in Boca? Larsa is like the she knows she's outgoing. She likes to go out and be on the scene, take pictures. Like, you're a Miami girl. Why aren't you looking for a home in Boca? And two, this is the Real Housewives of Miami, not Boca. But even if she didn't move to Boca Raton, it wouldn't be a problem for her. Think about how many housewives don't live in the city. 
of the show that they're on. A lot of the girls in Potomac don't live in Potomac. A lot of the girls in Beverly Hills don't live in Beverly Hills. A lot of the girls in Atlanta live on the outskirts in the suburbs of Duluth and, and College Park and all these other different places. <clears throat> so I don't see a problem with it if she did. But I just feel like Larsa is not really offering us a lot right now regarding storyline. All we're really seeing is her selling her house and selling feet pictures on OnlyFans. And while, yes, it's a storyline, it's not a very interesting one. I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. I got a scratch in my throat. Um. So we're going. I'm moving around the episode a little bit. But when they got to, when Adriana got to the dinner party that Julie's throwing, the birthday party, that Gertie is planning. Gertie planned it because she's a party planner. And Adriana moved this girl's this stuff around and pretty much told her it did not look good in here. I was floored. I was like, but, and people gave her hell. People are mad at Adriana over this, but you have to give Adriana her props because right now, if it wasn't for Adriana, let's be honest, we wouldn't have any of the dramatic moments. Adriana knows, you know, without it coming off forced and rehearsed, Adriana knows how to do her job. You know, she's being herself. She's being that spicy Latina that she is. And um, I love, I love to see it. Brazilian. I hope I said that right. Anyway, um, but yeah, she moved. The bar was like, Gertie had the bar designed a certain way. And Adriana went over there and moved it around and pretty much told Gertie, like, what is this? How, like, you designed this? Like, what? Now, the party didn't look bad to me. I was expecting a little bit more for Tulum and for a housewife's party. I was expecting a little bit more because Gertie's like a big party planner. And I'm not even, like, I do not not like Gertie. Going into this, she was one of my favorites. And I still like her to this day. This is just my opinion in the present moment for the episode, right? I was just expecting a little bit more because she's like a big, big, big deal in the world when it comes to party planning. So, um, Martina, the whole... So let me, let's get to let's get into the foot rub where Julia gives Adriana the foot rub because Adriana decides to wear these heels out into the mud with the goats and the pigs and she gets some muddy and somehow that turns into a foot rub because I think Adriana said her feet were hurting I don't know but ever since this new season started I have always thought that Adriana and Julia were very, very flirtatious. And I was like, how does Martina gonna feel about this when she sees this roll back? And almost so that I thought at one point they had an open marriage or something. I'm like, maybe Julia's just fine, or maybe Martina's just fine with her wife flirting with another woman on national television like this. If it were me, I would be embarrassed because I know my family's gonna watch this and gonna be like, why is your husband or why is your wife or whatever? flirting with another person on TV. Like, it was, I just feel like it's embarrassing. And two, Martina's a little bit older, so I'm sure she's old school when it comes to things like this. Um, and then I actually, we got to see a lot of Martina this episode. We got to see her interact and just kind of see who she was. And I like her because, first of all, she stood up to Adriana and she kind of put Adriana in her place when it came to Gertie at the dinner party. I like that about her. She, she she has integrity and she's doing the right thing. And she did let the cameras intimidate her. She was like, this is my home. I'm going to say what I want to say and I'm going to do what I want to do. And um, I like her. I'm like, is Martina going to have a mojito next season? Is Martina going to be a housewife? Um, because she was letting Adriana have it. And I have a feeling that she does not care for Adriana. I really feel like Martina tolerates her just because she's Julia's friend. But I really think that she probably doesn't like Adriana, she probably thinks she's a bad influence on Julia, and obviously she doesn't like the flirting, and we see that as she called it out on the new ep on this week's episode, um, you know, confronting her on why she was flirting with her wife, pretty much. At the dinner party, too, Larsa and Lisa just kind of were sitting there. Um, I was going to include Nicole on this, but Nicole actually spoke up a little bit, and Lisa spoke up a little bit, but I just feel like Larsa, Lisa, and Nicole, ugh, let me stop bringing Nicole into it. Larsa and Lisa, let me stick with them first, the two L's. They need to perform. Y'all need to perform a little bit more, and maybe we're too early into the season. Maybe I'm getting too excited because the show just started, 
But I feel like, like, especially at the dinner party, at the birthday party for Julia, they just sat there the whole time, like, and Kiki as well. Kiki, like, I need to see more from you as well, hun. I see why Kiki was not casted as full-time. She's just kind of, like, in the background. Though, um, it would have been a perfect opportunity for Kiki had to spoke up and said something regarding Gertie. Um, it, aren't Kiki and Gertie friends? Aren't, weren't they brought in together, I believe? Um, either way, I feel like Kiki could have said, said more. Unless, maybe she didn't agree with Gertie. Maybe she agreed with Adriana. Either way, she should have spoke her opinion. Um, I almost, the whole Adriana and Gertie thing, I really feel like Adriana is getting Karen vibes from Gertie. Y'all rem remember Karen from season two. And when Karen came in, they did not like her because they felt like she was doing too much for the camera and she was loving the attention and she was always smiling and she was in all the photo ops and she was wanting to, you know, meet different celebrities and she beat Adriana to the tweet. All these different things they didn't like Karen for. I think that same thing is what Adriana does not like about Gertie. I feel like she thinks Gertie is coming in and trying to steal the show and be like, because we all know how Gertie's over the top and loud and ah, you know, she's just very wow in your face. Some people have personalities like that. It's okay. But Adriana, I think, feels like, oh, this girl's trying to come in and, and, and get the center mojito and steal my shine. No, ma'am. That's what I feel like it's coming from. Some people, y'all may think it's childish. This is a 40, 50 something year old woman acting like this, but it's entertaining. In real life, do people act like this? No, not really, but it's entertaining. It's very entertaining, okay? Um, so Adriana, like I said earlier, she's the one making for good TV. She's the one doing the most. I'm almost curious as to, well, first of all, we've, we all know kind of why she wasn't a full-time housewife, they say, because one, Andy says that they didn't have enough room because they had too many housewives. Adriana says it's because she was in Harvard Law School and she was studying and she didn't have the time, but she's in every episode. She's got storylines, even though she's a friend of. It just doesn't make sense as to why she wasn't full-time. I feel like there's more to the story and there was something going on behind the scenes. Also, um... I'm curious to see how the reunion is going to play out because you know on the reunion the friends of only come out for like one part of the reunion or 30 minutes of the reunion. Adriana is in every episode. Adriana's in the center of all the drama. Are they going to have her on the couch the um the entire reunion? I feel like it would only make sense to have her there. I mean, she the only thing I can think of as to why they did not cast her full time is maybe a budget issue or something because maybe they were going to have to pay. They seen the cheaper way out was to bring in more new ones and then have a few OGs because if you think about it, Alexia is the only one that's been there from the beginning. Yes, Larsa was there season one, but Larsa also left. So she only had one year in the game. Alexia had three years in the in the game, even though one of those seasons she was part time. So maybe they were thinking maybe it was a money issue. And they didn't want to have to fork out so much money. I don't know what the case is. Um, I'd love to know more details about that. I really would like to interview Adriana on the channel, and I'll try to I'll try to get her on here and do an interview for y'all. Um, <clears throat> Marisol's playing the friend of role really well, but she's another one that I think I would have liked to have seen her full time as well. You know, she would have had a great storyline because she just got married to her husband, Steve. You know, I'd like to see life after Mama Elsa and how she's handling and dealing with that. Uh, life after, you know, no longer being a PR woman. What does she do for money? Is she living off Mama Elsa's money that she left her? You know, I was, I'd be curious to see all of that. Um, and I think that Marisol or Adriana should have took Nicole's place. Yes, and I'm like, I mean, no, I do not dislike, I do not hate Nicole, this is not nothing against her. I just feel like she's not bringing much. She just gives me friend of, friend of vibes. The only reason I think she's full-time is because like a lot of housewives, when you have, um, it's very good to have a big family or have a lot of people around you. Look at Candy who has, you know, the different people around her. She got the spinoff. Look at Lisa Vanderpump. She had all those people around her. So she got the spinoff. Uh, Kim Zosiak, she had all the, the big family. So she got the spinoff. Um, so I feel like with Nicole, she 
she's got her dad, her mom, her husband. She's got all these people in her life that I think if you took them away and it was just Nicole, she would have been friend up without a doubt because she's got all these supporting characters in her life to bring these story life storylines to life, you know? Um, and a lot of people like Nicole's husband, so... Um, I do give Nicole credit, though, for speaking up during the dinner. She spoke up for Gertie. Lisa also spoke up for Gertie. Um, you know, and I respect that. I really do. Um, like I said, Larsa, Lisa, and Kiki, they are my... Um, I'm going to give them not the MVP award of the week, but opposite of that. They're on the low of the totem pole for me. They're performing the least. They're in the background. We'll just say that. We got our background actors, which are going to be Larsa, Lisa, and Kiki. They're kind of fading in the back. In the front, who is standing out to me? Alexia is bringing it as far as storylines. Adriana is bringing it as far as drama and the humor. Gertie is bringing a lot personality. She's bringing drama as well. Um, so I like I like to see her, of course. Marisol is almost like the commentator of the group. She's almost like the narrator. I feel like she's like, you know, she's guiding us through the season and the storyline and through everything. So, um, you know, Marisol, what she's, she's doing a great job as well. I'm thoroughly pleased with the season. I'm super excited to see what's to come. We are going to have a two-part reunion. It's going to be filmed January 20th by Andy Cohen. Yes, even though this is on Peacock, Andy will be hosting the reunion. It's two parts. I still do not know if we're going to get 14 episodes plus two reunion equaling 16 or if we're going to get 12 episodes plus two equaling 14. They say we got 14 episodes. I don't know how what that means or how that goes. So... Let me know what you think. How do you feel about the new season of The Real Housewives of Miami? Who are your most valuable players so far and who is fading into the background for you? I would love to know your comments. Again, make sure you subscribe, like the video, share, comment. All that is free and means the world to me. And we'll get my video out there so we can start getting advertisers, sponsors, and so much more. And I can be here with you guys more. And um, we can, you know, shoot the shit. Until next time, thank you for watching Damien After Dark. Love y'all.